Let's do this. The first mention of Sodom occurs in Genesis 13, where Abram and Lot separate. Both men and their families are on their way to Canaan, the land promised by God. Along the way, travel conditions became cumbersome between the herdsmen, and so Abram offered the solution to separate. Lot chooses to move to what appeared to him as prime real estate, water and gardens everywhere. But verse 13 warns the reader that the people of Sodom were wicked, great sinners against the Lord. And that's why you should always check Zillow before moving into a new neighborhood. Zillow. I always found this story interesting since Abraham ends up in the land of God and Lot ends up in the land against God. Canaan, the land of God, an oasis flowing with milk and honey and abundance of life. Sodom, the land against God, where we'll see in Genesis 19, ends with an abundance of sinners, burning fire, and sulfur. Could this be the earliest scriptural reference to the dualistic imagery of heaven and hell? Genesis 18 features three angels that appear outside of Abram's tent. Immediately, Abram invites them into his tent, offers them water and bread, prepares a calf, and washes their feet. He takes on the role of a servant master, recognizing that all strangers could be representations of God. The result of Abram's hospitality is the promise that he and Sarai will have a baby. The angels then depart towards Sodom, and at the beginning of the next chapter, Lot greets the strangers and eventually invites them into his home where he makes them a feast. Before bedtime, all the men of the city surround the house and call out to Lot, where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us so that we may know them. Lot pleads with the men of Sodom by offering his two daughters in lieu of his guest. Good parenting? The townspeople criticize and threaten Lot for being an alien himself and for passing judgment on them. Lot's guests save him from the mob and instruct him to flee the city with his family. The next morning they do just that while God makes it rain sulfur and fire. In these chapters, Abram welcomes the strangers into his house and the result is a promise of life. Lot does the same thing and the result is a promise of life, well, for at least his family, uh, not so much for the people of Sodom. So what's the difference between the behavior and the outcome? The answer deals with hospitality, how we treat the strangers among us. Christian fundamentalists view the story of Sodom as God passing judgment on the town for their abhorrent, homosexual desires. The problem with this assumption is that it isn't supported by the text or even the rest of the Bible. It's simply not biblical. The threatened sex act was gang rape, a common practice in the ancient world to prove dominance. Sexual orientation is never mentioned, and since the text explicitly states that the whole town is involved, one could probably assume that the majority of the men were heterosexual. Why else would Lot offer his daughters instead? But in any case, the threatened sex act does not even occur. Elsewhere in the Bible, Sodom is often referenced, but as an example of great sinning, not one reference to homosexuality. The late Reverend John McNeil wrote, the Sodom and Gomorrah story should be viewed in context of other legends in the folklore of the surrounding cultures of the time in which it was written. Many of these legends tell of a stranger, sometimes a divine being in disguise, who visits a prosperous city and is refused hospitality. He eventually finds lodging, often with poor outcast. Consequently, he helps his host escape before for the city and its inhabitants are destroyed. The theme of hospitality continues further in the Hebrew Bible in the books of Joshua and Judges. In Joshua 8, Rahab, a prostitute, also a social outcast, offers hospitality to the Israelite spies and is thus spared God's wrath. Judges 19 offers a very similar story to that of Sodom in that an Ephraimite, someone who is also an alien to the land, living in a Benjaminite town called Gibeah, offers a Levite and his female companion hospitality. Again, all the men of the city show up and demand that the homeowner hand over the male traveler so that they can have intercourse with him. But in a twisted turn of events, the Levite throws his female companion out of the house so that the townsmen can have their way with her. The next morning, the Levite awakes and realizes that the woman is dead. So he cuts her into 12 pieces and sends them off to the 12 tribes to declare war on the Benjaminites, a war that ends with an abundance of death and fire. Judges 19 portrays the gang rape of a woman. Rape is a violation of the very dignity of a person. It is a dehumanizing and violent act that calls on God's judgment. Both Sodom and Gibea are about violation of strangers through rape, not the sexual orientation of the rapist. After all, Gibea ends with heterosexual rape and the crime is still punishable by fire. So does this mean that God is against heterosexuality? So if not found in the Bible, when did sodomy become associated with a condemnation of homosexuality? Roman Catholic scholar Mark Jordan explains that while early church fathers such as St. Ambrose and Origen clearly associate sodomy with inhospitality, the term sodomite originated in the 11th century as a new classification of certain clerical sins. 
In short, it was heterosexual monks trying to get it on with each other. And since then, Western tradition has expanded all meanings of the sin of Sodom to cover all homosexual acts, ignoring all the actual sins that are explicitly stated in the Bible. Dr. J. Michelson, a professor of Jewish thought, points out the Bible condemns many things in the story of Sodom. Lack of hospitality, humiliation of fellow human beings, brutality and violence towards others, pride, decadence, serious breach of human ethical obligations, but homosexuality is not one of them. Reading the story of Sodom as being about homosexuality is like reading the story of an axe murderer and saying it's about an axe. So I hope you now have a better idea of just how ignorant and ironic it is for people, particularly Christians, to label homosexual sodomites. Ironic because in the Bible, sodomy refers to people who discriminate, oppress, harass, and dismiss those who are most vulnerable in society. So when it comes to labels, sodomy is more actually the homophobe than it ever was the homosexual. Hey everyone, thanks for watching this video. If you believe there was anything that I said today that had some merit to it, please go ahead and click like there uh, below, subscribe to this channel, and more importantly, if you know anybody out there who is wrestling with their faith and their sexual orientation, please share this video, share this channel with them. They are my ministry, they are the reason why I'm doing this, and the word needs to get out.